pointed out we should have named the panel Breathing Death into Storytelling. <laughs> but no one invited Stephanie Meyer to this panel. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That was my obligatory, I had to say something to upset people because that raises our visibility. And any attention is better than no attention, which is pretty much how I grew up. So we're going to talk about storytelling. And the reason why this panel is important to me is I have spent my entire life telling stories. It started when I was a very little boy. Um, my name is Dan. My parents called me Danny. My mother called me Danny Don't. <laughs> because I was into everything, and I learned at a very early age to tell the most outrageous stories possible to explain why the cookies are gone. Aw, now see, do you know why that child is crying? Because that child was at our sword class yesterday and our self-defense class, and as long as I'm being beaten, kid's happy. <laughs> if I'm just going to talk, start crying. <laughs> But we're going to talk about story. <laughs> well, I'm glad one of us brought weapons to this class in case it gets hostile. Don't even make me cry. I was ready. So you're going to defend yourself with a plastic lightsaber. <laughs> you are in the wrong. Pa I know it lights up too. That's very. <laughs> oh yes, you want to explain your shot? Can't you see John Travolta in a stormtrooper outfit? <laughs> 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 I know, and I have that kind of sick brain. If it's in there, I'm sharing with you, because misery loves company. Group therapy is more fun than private sessions. We're going to talk about storytelling today. It covers multiple mediums. What I have here, these are two authors. That means they write things down. And so most of what we're going to talk about is going to be in written form, but the points and the questions, hopefully, that you have apply to more than just books, movies, a storyteller, if you want to go old school, people sitting around the campfire, you know, when you were in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts and they were telling you the legend of the hook, because they always, how many of you ever had that stunt pulled on you? For those of you that don't know, this is going to a campfire without your parents, first time camping trip, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Transgender Scouts, Tentacle Scouts, whatever your thing is. And the camp director gets you seated around a fire and you're all eating s'mores and having fun. It's gotten dark and it's time for ghost stories. And somebody gets up and they tell the story of that area's escaped lunatic who got his arm chopped off and replaced it with a hook. And while you're sitting there because you're 12, and you ain't nobody's fool. So you're going, yeah, right, I know better than that. And one of the camp counselors, usually some big moron that likes scaring people, <laughs> suddenly jumps in right by the ring of fire and goes, ah! wearing a trench coat and a hook where his hand should be. And everybody screams and runs off and has future therapy bills. <laughs> um, I had that joke pulled on me and then I started doing it to other people. <laughs> Actually, to the point where at Halloween one year, we had a house that had teenage neighbor kids that thought it was funny to play Ding Dong Ditch on Halloween night all night long. Mm -hmm. So while I stayed home to give kids candy, they'd run up, ring the doorbell, run away, and you could hear giggling from behind the garage. And finally, I got tired of it, and I put on a monster mask and a sword yeah. and put fake blood all over my arms and climbed up, I went out the other door, climbed up on the roof of our house, <laughs> and hid right above the door. And when they ran up and rang the doorbell, no lie, I jumped over the top of them, landed on the ground behind them, and went, Whoa! <laughs> and they called the police. <laughs> and when the cops showed up, I was changed, I had the blood all washed off, and I was dressed in my nice clothes, not like this. With a bowl of candy. So when the officer rang the doorbell, I said, Yes, would you? Oh, that's a good costume. <laughs> there was somebody I knew, and he's like, You know, we got a report of somebody chasing kids with a sword. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you thought of me? <laughs> Why would you do that? But we had no problems with Ding Dong Ditch after that. <laughs> Alright, and I know that has nothing to do with storytelling. Actually, actually, that is a story. Yeah, Thank you. And so that, 
we'll use that to launch this panel. Let's talk about storytelling. There are three reasons why most people will tell stories. And I'm going to hit the points really quick, and then we're going to turn it over to my other panelists, and I'll even introduce you to them. Because I realized I was very rude and didn't do that. And my mom raised me better than that. Hmm. So that's, what she, that's what she, my wife didn't raise me, she beats me down. That's the opposite direction. Hey, sweetie, I love you. It's not going to help, is it? Not this time. 